voices. All right, hey, uh, we are just one day away now from uh, the big election day, and we're gonna try and wrap it up a little bit with some analysis, and that is our political analyst, John Dadian, is here, and he's fired up. Good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. One day to go. This is it. Oh, my. All right, let's start with this race for Congress, and we were just talking that this is perhaps the ugliest race that we have ever seen maybe in San Diego County, maybe across the entire country. This thing is nasty. It's as nasty as it gets. But on the other hand, I got to be honest with you, there haven't been many surprises. Four months ago, you know, I predicted that the it was going to be tight and neck and neck right up to the end. We've seen that. I, I said it was going to be as nasty as it's going to get. My prediction came true. The phrase I used a couple months ago was the gloves that were taken off, the brass knuckles were on. Yeah, the brass knuckles are on and it's ripping flesh as we speak on it's both sides bad. of the deal. And it's not necessarily the candidates, although the candidates might want to take this approach, but it's the outside money. This, uh, these are the, the PACs, the political action committees, have spent between seven and eight million dollars in outside money for this one little race. And I know you don't call it a little race, but it's one person out of 435 people. Well, One yes, voice. Yeah, yeah, ten yeah. million. This is more than the governor's race. Well, they're not spending ten million dollars on both sides of the governor's race. Well, when you say that a one out of four hundred thirty-five people, so that's only four hundred thirty-five people in the country out of three hundred million. These are our people who represent us. Um, so th th think about that. But also think about if you want to use the number four hundred thirty-five of the four hundred thirty-five uh, in Congress, this is one of the top five races. Why? So, because, Why? Because of the registration, because it's so close, either party can pick up the seat. Right. Now, Carl DeMaio, obviously a very interesting, sort of an anomaly among Republicans, been accused of being everything, you know, whatever. Accused of a lot of things that have not, you know, come true. Uh, but nonetheless, he is a new kind of guy. And it looks like the Democrats are going after him, not only p politically, but personally on a level that I've never seen before. Well, including, you know, the stories that are still coming out with a day to go. Well, and what the what the his opponents are saying as far as the negative, this new kind of guy, he's trying to say, I'm the new kind of Republican. You know, I'm the I'm not one, and I'm going to disagree with my party. It's interesting if you notice the themes of both campaigns are very similar. Carl's saying I can work across the aisle. Scott Peters saying I can work across the aisle. Carl's saying that I can go against my party when I need to. Scott's saying that. So uh, it's, it's it, for for that district in San Diego, they're appealing to a lot of the same issues. I know that you, guys like you say negative ad work because they get to under people's skin and that's what they remember uh, but these negative ads if you actually believe what these ads are saying I would say both of these guys are unfit for any office you know, again, again, I do get into the insider minutiae stuff. Here's going to be an interesting number that I'm going to look for uh, after Election Day, and that is I'm going to see how many people in that area voted and then how many skipped that race. And that will give us a good indication whether or not there was a lot of dissatisfaction. Or disgust. Or many other words you could use. Yeah, I think it's worse than dissatisfaction. I've Absolutely. never seen anything like it. All right, let's go down the line here. Uh, Susan Davis is running. That's, it hasn't gotten any attention at all. In fact, I haven't seen a single TV ad. Yeah, it's kind of a, unopposed. We have five members of Congress here in the region. No, she's got a former Navy SEAL running for the first time. New candidate. He's a little green, but he's he's working hard. Um, but yeah, the the other four, uh, other than the uh, Scott Peters race, are, are pretty secure in their districts. All right, Chris, Kate, Carol, Kim. Uh, this could be a game changer. Uh, it is a city council seat, of course. And this could swing it one way or another in terms of the majority, super majority on the council. And that's actually, literally, that's how important this council race is. Yeah. This race will decide the direction of the city at least for the next two years, if not longer. There's nine council districts, but this one, because if the Democrat wins, there's a super majority that can override the mayor's veto. If the Republican wins, then they've got some leverage on working on compromises. And this will depend on whether or not Mayor Faulkner has a successful next two years. And then keep in mind, it seems like yesterday, but in two years, he'll be for re-election himself. Does seem like yesterday. All right, uh, a lot of people probably don't know it, but there's a governor's race. I've heard that rumor. No, seriously. Really? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've seen Jerry Brown's ads, but he's talking about water, props one and two. I haven't seen him running for governor. Actually, that's a very important point, Dan. I've been doing this for uh, approximately 30 years. I have never seen a re-election uh, re for a statewide race where they did not do a, a, a commercial for the candidate. They, there's not one Brown for governor. It's the But what he's doing is smart. He's getting his face out, endorsing two propositions, and they were his you know, propositions to begin with. His and issues. it's paid for by his campaign, yeah. but it doesn't say re-elect the governor. It's, it's astounding. It, it really is. He, he, and, and Neil Kashkari, of course, is... Uh, 
you know, a uh, big time Wall Street guy. He was in charge of the uh, TARP fund and, and, and that kind of thing. So he's got some serious financial backing, but absolutely not getting any traction. First time candidate, so a lot of times somebody runs to get name ID, especially statewide. But I got to tell you, there were several, but especially one ad that he did that's raising eyebrows across the country. And it's going to go down, uh, not in my opinion, not the worst, but one of the worst across the country for this election cycle. His one of his ads? The, the one where he pulls a kid out of a swimming pool and basically insinuates it's Jerry Brown's fault. It's, it's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Wow. All right, finally, uh, we got to wrap this up. But finally, uh, Ron Nearing, former chairman, Republican chairman uh, of the state and San Diego County, running right. against, of course, Gavin Newsom. And this uh, Gavin Newsom looks like it's going to be a blowout. Well, for a couple of reasons, several statewide uh, office holders are running for re-election, such as Kamala Harris, Attorney General, and Gavin Newsom. What they're really doing is they're running for governor in four years. Yeah. So they're doing this. So they're looking pretty secure. Ron Nearing, who I happen <clears throat> to know uh, personally, sure. is doing it for the right reasons. He wanted a credible candidate. He didn't think that the uh, incumbent should go unchallenged, and he didn't want somebody in there who really wasn't substantial. Ron, with his background, is clearly a credible candidate, so he's given it a run, and he's working very hard. All right, well, tomorrow is the day. Thank God. Yes, thank goodness, and uh, so we have to only hear these ads. When, of course, the television stations and the management of TV stations are going, the ads are over already? You know There's who, a lot of money. You know who will be happy on, a, on a Monday? Your postman. Yes, the postman. Uh, on Wednesday. Oh, believe me, I've been uh, inundated with those flyers. And these are not cheap flyers. Oh, it's these a, are fancy, shiny, glossy, color. oversized. All of that adds up. It sure does. It sure does. All right. Well, listen, John. Thank you so much for coming Good in. See you, Dan. We do appreciate it. I know you're going to be hanging around all the politicos on election day, so we'll probably see. I you. might make an appearance. I'm sure that you'll be there. All right. Let's.